We didn't expect to have uh, an impact here in Houston. When we saw that storm coming to New Orleans, we felt bad about it and knew what the people were doing to prepare there. But uh, it got so bad and people began to evacuate there. I was on the phone with some FEMA representatives, friends of mine who happened to be working with uh, special needs people trying to get them out of New Orleans. I was actually in my backyard on a cell phone with uh, a FEMA person who had a chopper on the phone while I was on another phone with a lady who was connected uh, with a family member who was in a wheelchair on the second floor of a building in downtown New Orleans. We had to guide the chopper in to rescue her. So at that point we knew this was not business as usual even when it comes to hurricanes and disasters. But later on, a few days after the storm struck, we began to get phone calls at our offices. We have an 800 line that uh, we help people with Americans with Disabilities Act ADA issues. The number is 800-949-4232. And we serve Louisiana among other states. We started to get calls on that line from people with disabilities and family members who had been displaced by the storm and had no place to go. So we put into action a plan to bring on a number of volunteers. We manned those phone lines uh, as many hours a day as we could. Uh, we talked to a lot of people, over 3,000 people during the ensuing weeks following the uh, storm and helped them find places to be that were safe shelter that they could go to that was wheelchair accessible in some cases, in other cases that was accessible to blind people or to deaf people. Uh, it was a real uh, opportunity for us, but a real challenge in the sense that there were so many people who needed help. We had so many people that needed to be accommodated. We had to be concerned about deaf people who could not hear the announcements in the venue. We had to make sure they were getting information about what was going on. We had to be concerned about people who had mobility impairments to make sure that they could actually get to bathrooms that were functional and usable for them. And uh, we learned a lot about accommodating people who had uh, mental impairments, who had, uh, as a result of everything going on, a lot of ex external com uh, communications issues, but also issues pertaining to uh, their consciousness, their ability to uh, undertake all this information at once. Well, one of the things we learned from that episode, and we've practiced it since, had to do with preparing for people with disabilities. Before that, I think the assumption was made that folks with disabilities had family members who would care for them or caregivers that would help them. And that turned out not to be the case because many family members who had been helping people with disabilities in Louisiana all of a sudden had to help themselves and had to help their, their, their core family. And they weren't available. And also caregivers who were uh, very dependable under ordinary circumstances all of a sudden had their own personal issues to deal with and they couldn't be responsible for caring for and assisting people with disabilities. People with disabilities learn to live in an environment that they have organized purposefully. Uh, deaf people have interpreters usually and that's in their ordinary life but when you go to a situation that you're not familiar with you don't know what's there and unless its accommodations are provided before you get there, uh, you're going to be in a, a, a really uh, confounding situation. Well, I think everybody with a disability or anyone, regardless of whether or not they have a disability, who may need help in a disaster, may need assistance, maybe uh, uh, evacuating, maybe they don't have a car that works, uh, maybe they're stuck in a rural place without uh, bus service. Uh, people need to register with 211 and that service will put them on a list. The list is safe, it's secure, it's only used in the event of a disaster, but when a disaster comes, uh, the local authorities use that list. Uh, you can also go on the web and uh, look at disability911.org and get a lot of information about preparing for an emergency if you have a disability. We have lists there of the things you need to be ready to pack. Everybody needs to have a go bag. You need to have it packed with your medicine, extra pair of glasses, anything like that in case you have to evacuate. If you have a dog guide or some kind of assistive animal, you need to make sure you have some food uh, for that animal ready to go in the event of an emergency so that you can care for that animal properly.